Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. I've got the uh, live Deerfield cam up right now and uh, kind of interesting. It just occurred to me that things are not always as they look or they sound. And I'll tell you about this in a moment and kind of a little bit about what we're going to touch on during our video here about uh, uh, manipulation and uh, censorship and uh, that kind of thing. Um, and uh, here, let me point this out to you. I've been watching these videos for a while. This is the live Deerfield Beach Cam. I'm sure that the uh, video is live, but I just noticed here, and if you don't mind me pointing this out, that uh, I can just turn that volume up a little bit. The ocean sound, if you listen to the ocean sound, it's recorded, it's pre-recorded. It is not the original sound of the ocean there, which I really uh, was surprised on that. Uh, so again, you know, in your whole life, you know, from the day you're born, uh, there's manipulation going on, whether it's uh, uh, Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny or uh, markets, governments, elections, consumerism, you name it, uh, there's constantly manipulation and censorship going on. And how does this apply to gold and silver markets? Are we any different than any other market or anything else in life? No, not really. Uh, but we'll get into that in a little bit here. Uh, beautiful day out there, 64 degrees. I mean, how do you beat that? And again, let's listen to some more canned uh, here. We'll get into our video and talk about precious metals and all that good stuff here in a moment. But uh, there you go. There's, there's what canned ocean sounds sound like. They'll throw a bird in there in a moment. And I wouldn't have never noticed it if I hadn't watched this video so many times. Also notice that the waves aren't crashing at the same time as the uh, sound here. So, <laughs> oh, let's move into our video here. Uh, uh, funny, I don't want to get it too much into that right now. Let's look at what markets are because I'm sure a lot of you watch the overnight markets and we're going to take a look at what the highs and lows here. Um, this morning it was close to that $1,800 market. Looks like it's kind of wavering. Uh, 1784.66, the low, 1799.94. You know, remember what I talked about these psychological numbers. Look, 1799.94, not even 18, six cents off. There, there really is a lot of truth to psycho, you know, to numbers uh, having a psychological effect on people, especially with gold and silver. 1800, 1850, and I, gold seems to to work really eh, maybe in 50 and 100, more like 100 dollar increments when gold. Uh, well, the next level is that $100 higher. And uh, silver kind of seems to work in those dollar increments, more or less, on the psychological lever, uh, le lever, level. Uh, again, look, $22.99, just a tad below $23. Uh, is that supposed to break your spirit? I'm not sure. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, let's see here. And, and speaking of manipulation and uh, uh, censorship, uh, well, here, let's uh, talk about metals first here. Uh, $22.99 being the low, it looks like it dipped below just barely a half a cent according to this spot price right here below 23. Uh, the psychological level has been broken. Oh my God. <laughs> and uh, 2346 being the high, uh, currently sitting at 2301, folks. I mean, look at these numbers. You, could, you couldn't make them up if you tried. Uh, platinum, 970.13. Wow, that's a freaking wonderful buy. Uh, 959.23, uh, the low, 983.07, the high. Uh, platinum currently sitting at 970 uh, in the green, as is palladium. Uh, palladium took quite a hit, too, uh, from its highs, even bigger than all the rest of the metals. I think palladium at its height was, what, 3,000 or more uh, or something, even four, I forget. I don't follow it that much. Uh, but she's back down to where the uh, price of gold is right now, or almost, very close to it. Uh, I wonder at what point gold will surpass, surpass the price of palladium. It's sure looking like it's going to at some point here. Well, let's take a look at the 24-hour charts and uh, see what was going on there. And, of course, we can expect to see that there's lots of activity in the New York open in the morning. Well, let me not assume that, but there has been for the last month or so. Uh, let's take a look at gold prices first. Uh, here is our current uh, 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 line since last night. These are the overnight markets, as you can see. Uh, I'm not sure which. Uh, uh, New York, London, Hong Kong, you can see what time they all open here. But as you can see, it kind of hovered in that 1795, touched up again near that 1799 level. And it looks like it, it, London markets more than likely. If it was Globex markets, then it was just, uh, well, anyway, it's all nonsense. But. Uh, it looks like the uh, uh, markets before New York started falling here, and then when you see New York right here, you see a little blip upwards, and then New York opens, and bam, 
uh, back down to that 1785 mark. Probably has something to do with the stock markets not hemorrhaging as much as possible. And the big commercial uh, uh, buyers and sellers out there, uh, uh, or the big commercial uh, short positions out there, monkey hammering things around, as are other people and being allowed to do it. Well, let's take a look at the 24-hour spot silver chart here as well. And uh, you'll see silver, let's take a look, New York opens right about here. And this is when you start, of course, Comex is where silver is getting monkey hammer the most. And that is where the big short uh, uh, commercials are right there in Comex. And, and this is probably a result of them for sure, somehow, some way, <laughs> uh, these markets right here. And take a look, they knocked it down below that $23 mark. Uh, interestingly enough, um, uh, I, I didn't realize this. Well, I did realize this, but uh, Ted Butler talks about the uh, big commercial short positions out there, and he's been keeping a running total since I think it was what 2018, 2019, or or whatever it was. Uh, the big commercials have been uh, uh, holding these short positions, and they're they've been in a big losing position. Not so much. Uh, as they were when silver was close to the thirty dollars an ounce, but uh, according to Ted Butler, they still are in an eight billion dollar deficit loss uh, on these short positions that they have to lay off to someone. And uh, as Ted mentions quite often, he believes that th th the whole point is to try to lay them off on managed money. But uh, uh, currently, they are owing a little bit less than, or they're less of a deficit than they were. Um, the big short positions on Comex are currently. Uh, approximately eight billion dollars in the hole uh, right now and if they can drop that price a little bit lower maybe they can get out of their short positions without losing a ton of money but let's take a look at uh, some other things let's look at the Wall Street market and see what's going on there since it seems to have an effect on uh, precious metals somewhat when because when this market takes a shit it's uh, uh, all bets are off on where precious metals are going uh, you know as far as the, how high they're going to go in my opinion uh, again, as I said, when, when and if this market takes a total dump, one of those overnight or quick dumps over a week or a couple weeks, uh, you know, in a large scale downward, uh, that's, you're going to see gold and silver prices fall as well, uh, but that'll be paper prices more than likely. I'm just kind of assuming it will because that's what happened in 2008 before metals took off again to all-time highs. Uh, I think we'll see the same thing if this market takes a total crap. But look at this. Everything's up this morning. Dow's back up a little bit. Uh, what is it? 026 percent. Uh, almost 1 percent on the S&P. Is this a dead cat bounce? I don't know. I think a lot of this was smacked down. You know, last week was a slow holiday trading on Friday. Um, you know, Black Friday, I believe. Markets closed early, so did gold and silver markets, I believe, as well. And uh, uh, because of the new critter variant uh, that's supposed to come out or, or came out of uh, South Africa, now, uh, uh, you know, that hammered markets down? I don't know. Sounds more like an excuse for markets to get hammered down or an excuse for uh, uh, to lay the blame off on the critter. But anyways, I digress. Let's take a look at uh, Bitcoin also showing a little bit of bounce here. And let me just do a quick refresh here and see what's going on. Uh, but not quite so much. Bitcoin's still way off from its highs here uh, not too long ago. Wow, $67,000 down to uh, uh, 56, 57. That's a $20,000 loss per Bitcoin. My gosh. Uh, I feel sorry for people that bought it this high here. You know, again, if you're into Bitcoin, you're probably going to say no to get that high again. Well, that's yet to be seen here, but uh, let's move along to something else. What I was talking about, manipulation and censorship. It happens everywhere. It even happens on my stupid video here in the morning. <laughs> and uh, uh, one of the things, it, you got, you got to get used to the point, is from the day you're born, from the day we are all born, we are manipulated somehow by our parents, by our society, by consumerism, by the things we watch, by governments. Again, you know, we have learned, well, hopefully, some of us have learned uh, uh, that we are manipulated in every way, shape, or form from the day we're born, all right? And, and, and you can't get angry about that, and you can't get, you know, the, the whole point of me bringing this up is, you know, of course the game is rigged. Don't let that stop you. If you don't play, you can't win. Most of you have heard me say this one million times at least, uh, but it's very true. But first, you have to recognize that the game is rigged, okay? And I, again, I don't care when's the first time you recognize that the Easter Bunny wasn't real or the, or the uh, San, Santa Claus wasn't real. Most of us probably can't remember back that far. However, I will tell you that humans are pretty smart. We underestimate humans even from the day they're small. You know, because most of us, I don't know how many of you remember when you were a little kid, 
did you really believe in Santa Claus or did when, when you had when you're old enough to have a cognitive thought did you really believe in Santa Claus or did you kind of have a sneaking suspicion that Santa may have not been as real as your parents were trying to tell you they were uh, but you went with it anyway <laughs> <laughs> and the same thing with the Easter Bunny, okay? Maybe when you're a little tiny, tiny, uh, and your cognitive skills weren't that good, you might believe Easter Bunny. Or, uh, but at some point as a child, you started to get to the point, well, you know, uh, mom and dad were telling me this. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> again, manipulation and uh, the censorship would be people not telling you. And, and did, I don't think any news uh, organization or corporate media ever came out and said to all the children across the world, it's a lie, Santa's a lie, the Easter Bunny's a lie, and whatever other you know, fantasy characters out there. Um, you know why? Because that's censorship as well. So in some, in some ways, I mean, not in some ways, in every way that, uh, there's manipulation and censorship out there, whether it's, whether it's major media not telling little humans that, that Santa Claus doesn't exist and <laughs> keeping that up, uh, to, uh, like I said, governments, you know, lying to you about wars and, and about all this stuff. Uh, elections, uh, I'm not going to get into that. Consumerism, being lied to about products, you know. It is a daily occurrence. All right. The, the thing is, again, is, is recognizing uh, uh, where the manipulation lie and recognizing and seeing things for what they really are, not for what you thought they were, what you told they were. And, and again, everything is rigged. So I don't want people to get really bummed out. Oh, man, precious. And I hear that so often with precious metals. Oh, oh, it's rigged. It's rigged. Comics rigged. And, and then I hear the other thing that people that don't really follow the news. Oh, JP's rigging it now. Well, JP, well, maybe to some degree, but, you know, JP no longer has a short position. They got away with the rigging back in 2018 or 19 or something like that. Again, too big to, to, to fail, too big to jail. Uh, we talk about that all the time. But I don't want you to get depressed about uh, uh, any uh, markets being rigged, or especially gold and silver, because a few of you do out there. Well, it's never going to go anywhere. It's never. It's constant. Listen, folks. It's of course it's rigged. But if you if you don't know that it's rigged, or you don't know how it's rigged, then that kind of stuff seems really important and, and a real bummer. However, once you realize that Santa Claus doesn't exist, you know you know the game is rigged. You know how to play it, and you know how to get those extra gifts every year as a child. So. Uh, most kids know Santa Claus is not real, be and the parents don't even have to tell them. They figure it out on their own, man. And then they figure out how to how to play the game, how to keep getting gifts. Because you're not going to say at the age of six, yeah, say you suck, man. Santa Claus is not real. You may not get any gifts anymore. So you learn how to play the game. That's that's <laughs> that's one example of playing the game. Again, the censorship is never telling you that Santa isn't real, or never, or, or you know, hiding stuff from you. Um, interesting little video here that it talks about market manipulation. It's something we have specifically going on with these uh, big short positions that Comex hasn't really done anything with. However, we will get to the point where uh, where they will. I believe they will. Give me one second here. Let me uh, take a quick drink of coffee here. Hmm. Let me play this video for you real quick. I should have done that while I was drinking my coffee. Give me one second here, and I'll get this video started. It's done by Investopedia. It's called Market Manipulation, and I know some of you. I know what that means, but there's some cool stuff here I want to show you. Uh, let's get into that real quick, and let me hit that button right there. Market manipulation is the act of artificially inflating or deflating the price of a security or influencing the behavior of the market for personal gain. It's also called price manipulation, stock manipulation, and market manipulation. The market manipulator deceives other participants to create a situation where assets are mispriced so that the manipulator can then profit from knowing better. Market manipulation may or may not involve making and publishing false statements, but it all... Now follow this, and again, this is specifically when you're thinking of this video I'm showing you right here, think about the, uh, don't mean to interrupt it, I'm sorry, but think about how they manipulate this prices. involves acting to influence prices in order to create false impressions. The manipulator then profits at the expense of other market participants whom the manipulator has deceived. An example of manipulation is placing simultaneous buy and sell orders through different brokers that cancel each other out. This practice gives the perception that, due to the higher volume, there's increased interest in the asset. The pump and dump is another example, and is the most frequently used manipulation tactic. It aims to inflate a microcap stock artificially, so that the manipulator can sell at a high, leaving later followers holding the bag when the stock price falls. Because the manipulator creates and then reverses the mispricing, market manipulation hurts market efficiency. It does not benefit society like genuine entrepreneurship or an honest investing strategy. Although currency manipulation is legal, 
Different types of manipulation, such as stock and market manipulation, are illegal. Of course, it can be difficult for regulators to detect. Okay, so basically, you know, you can watch this video yourself for free on Investopedia. It's very interesting, and uh, it explains exactly kind of what we got going on in the silver markets. And uh, there's, there's different kinds. There's pump and dumps, and then there's what I, I recently learned this one myself. It's called poop and scoop, all right? So <laughs> I'm going to get into what poop and scoop is. You kind of know what uh, pump and dump is. They, they explained it more there, uh, you know, on the uh, Investopedia video right there. But market manipulation, this is the investor.gov, U.S. Securities and Exchange. Apparently they know what manipulation is, they just don't do anything about it. Uh, they're either inept or uh, uh, don't care or, or in bed with them somehow. Uh, market manipulation is somewhat artificially affects the supply or demand for a security. Uh, market manipulation may involve uh, techniques including spreading false or misleading information about a company. Uh, and again, that's not what we're seeing in precious metals. Uh, engage in a series of transactions to make a security appear more actively traded. And rigging quotes, prices, or trade to make it look like there is more or less demand for security. Now there's what we got going on precious metals right now. Let me blow that up so you can read it as well as uh, me uh, repeat it one more time. Um, Give me one second. Rigging quotes, prices, or trades to make it look like there is more or less demand for security than is the case. And that's exactly what we got going on with precious metals here. So, give me one second and let me move along to Investopedia's uh, uh, definition of manipulation here. Uh, market manipulation is the act of artif artificially inflating, and as they put out here, what we got uh, going on with these big short positions, or deflating the price of a security, or otherwise influencing the behavior of market for personal gain. Folks, it says it right on the government, uh, right on the government website right here. Take a look at it. It says it right there. It says it right here. This is exactly market manipulation is the act of artificially inflating or in the case of precious metals what we got going on with these short positions at the CME deflating the price of security or otherwise influencing the behavior of the market for personal gain this is this quote should be right next to the picture of the the uh, commercial bankers short positions and uh, this is exactly what we got going on in the silver markets uh, and it's nothing is being done about it by the uh, uh, CFTC and again you know don't worry about it because it'll blow up in their faces. But one thing you've got to realize is you've got to remember is that, uh, uh, you know, government agencies like the CFTC and these uh, regulation agencies, they're not here to help you folks. They're here just to, when everything blows up, government loves to come in, throw up their hands and say, we're here to help you. When they did nothing to prevent it, even when they know it's happening, okay? So uh, I digress. Uh, manipulation is illegal in most cases, but it can be difficult for regulators and other authorities to detect it. Um, and again, such as omnibus accounts, I'm not quite sure what that is, but uh, 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 it's not difficult to detect. And, and they've got it all in front, especially with the gold and silver markets. It's so obvious. It's so in their faces. And again, uh, your regulatory agencies like the CFTC and uh, 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 again, all the other, all because all markets are rigged. They're all manipulated. Again, as I said before, look at Bernie Madoff. Bernie Madoff says every time he would get a visit from one of the agencies, he'd say, all right, this is it. It's over. And then they'd come in, chat him up, want one of his cigars and uh, uh, go to dinner, you know, have him take. These people are either inept uh, I would say partially inept, and if they're not inept, they're uh, uh, complicit because they allow it to happen. But no less, let's move along here. Uh, manipulation is also difficult for the manipulators. The size and number of participants in the market increases. It, and this is what I'm talking about. Eventually, the manipulation in precious metals is going to blow up right in these people's faces. I mean, the silver shorts are sitting on an $8 billion loss right now. If they can't control uh, this market and knock it back down to closer to that uh, uh, $18 mark from what I've heard, then uh, they're going to lose $8 billion or something to that tune. So again, this is what I've read and heard. Uh, I haven't personally confirmed it myself, but people way smarter than me uh, have confirmed it for me. Uh, it is much easier to manipulate the share prices of smaller companies such as penny stocks because, all right, and watch them close as large cap firms. Manipulation is variously called price manipulation, stock manipulation, and market 
market manipulation. We'll call it market manipulation, all right? Uh, manipulation is difficult to catch, but it is also difficult for the manipulator as the size of the market becomes larger. And that's what we got going on with the precious metal silver. You know, silver. Silver market's becoming larger, more players, the price is getting higher. Uh, so the manipulation, you know, it, it's, it's getting tougher for them to knock that price back down. Again, it's getting, it's, it's, they're having a real hard time uh, not taking a loss on this big short position they have with silver. At what point they'll capitulate or will they knock it back down to $18? I don't know. I don't think they will. I think they're in trouble right now. Uh, manipulation can be referred to as price market stock manipulation. This is one right here that really, I never heard of poop and scoop, so this one was great for me. Two common types of stock manipulation are pump and dump and poop and scoop. All right, let me move over here to poop and scoop because this, this really kind of explains exactly what we got going on in the precious metals market. Poop and scoop occurs when a small group of informed people attempts to drive down a stock's price or commodity by spreading false information rumors and otherwise damaging information in order to buy the stock at a lower price. If they are successful, they can purchase the stock at a bargain price as the overall market will have sold off the security, causing the price to fall dramatically. Poop and scoop is generally frowned on. Um, but what the definition here, it says, by spreading false rumors and otherwise damaging information. All right. Well, I'd like to add something to poop and scoop. What if you are able just to go in like they talked about earlier and, and knock a market down dramatically by, by uh, uh, one of the manipulative features they talk about is, is by, you know, placing orders and then sells at the same time, making the market look a lot worse than it is. And this is exactly what they've been doing. Uh, they, they, they poop on the market, uh, uh, these big short positions, and then they're trying to scoop back up the dollars or the uh, physical silver. In the case of J.P. Morgan, uh, J.P. Morgan uh, w knocked the silver market down dramatically, manipulated that silver market. They should be in jail for it in 2012 and above. Uh, but again, they only got fined, no jail time. Uh, too big to fail, too big to jail. But that's basically a poop and scoop is kind of what they did. Is they, they, they went in, they manipulated the markets downward dramatically, caused, ma made psychologically uh, really hurt the gold and silver markets in 2012 and uh, uh, by, by driving the markets down substantially. That was nothing to do with uh, everything getting better. That was, 2012 was pure, pure manipulation, uh, especially in the silver markets. And, and who was it primarily done by? The big shorts out there. And JP was one of them. Um, so they made a billion dollars, billions of dollars doing this. And again, poop and scooping. So. <laughs> Uh, let's see, it's generally frowned upon by security exchange regulators can be prosecuted by the SEC. I doubt it. These, again, no one's, no one's going to uh, screw with J.P. Morgan. They're too big to uh, f uh, fail and too big to jail. Um, and I believe they actually have worked for the government in some capacity in some way. And this is the reason that uh, no government regulators or politicians will touch them. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is censorship, because the only w way that these people get away with these kind of crimes, the only way these people get away with uh, whether it's uh, uh, Santa Claus, Easter Bunny, markets, governments, elections, consumerism, you name it, the only way these people get away with this is censorship, and censorship is primarily controlled by major corporations. So if you're a viewer of CNN or MSNBC or Fox, you're part of the problem, folks. I'm sorry. I turned, I turned corporate news off in 2008 and haven't watched it since then. Uh, and I'm much, much smarter for it. Now, I go online, I look for information. I, I read news, I read different reports from different left, right, middle, you name it. And then I go out and I research it myself. I don't go home and spend a half hour in the morning and half hour in the evening watching some talking fucking idiot head on TV telling me what to think and why I should think it. All right, whether it's Fox or, or, or MSNBC, either one of those, all right? I don't. Anyways, uh, in my opinion, anyone that agrees with censorship is a weak, intolerant, control freak who has more in common with Stalin than liberty. Those who censor are not friends of liberty nor peace. They are cohorts with evil. I wrote that myself, folks. I think it's original. So, And uh, again, the reason they get away with manipulation is censorship. And censorship can be also just not telling someone, so, omitting something, which is quite often done. So, you know, censorship doesn't necessarily mean uh, uh, not allowing someone to tell the truth. It also is not telling the truth yourself. 
uh, censorship is omitting the truth. And man, we see so much of that, man. And, and again, that, you know, from Santa Claus to elections to consumerism, uh, there's just so much censorship out there. It's not even funny. And it's getting a little harder on the uh, interweb as well to, to find the truth. You know, you've got search engines like Google and other that will bury results that aren't mainstream corporate narrative uh, uh, thoughts, you know, or narratives, I should say. So, you know, I like this by Mark Twain. I don't know if he said it, but censorship is telling a man he can't have steak just because a baby can't chew it. Uh, anyone that agrees with censorship in any way, shape, or form, whether it's government or whether it's corporate, um, man, uh, these are evil people, folks. Uh, so uh, not good to. And again, why, why do people? Why would people want to manipulate and censor you, especially when it comes to markets, governments, elections, consumerism? Whether it's gold and silver markets, treasury markets, whether it's crypto markets, well, follow the money. A lot of times, it's done out of greed, folks. So ma manipulation and censorship is primarily out of greed. Follow the money. It's all about power and control. All right. You know, some people can say, well, it's just about some madman. That well, well there are some madmen out there that want power and control. Uh, take a look at some of your big uh, billionaires out there. They have all the money in the world, but they want to go out there and they want to tell you how to live your life, all right? Uh, so it's beyond money sometimes when you get to that point. And again, censorship, who owns, who owns these big corporate uh, uh, media? Who owns the uh, uh, big markets, Comex and uh, uh, the CME group? I mean, follow the money, man. Follow the money and you'll find the biggest fucking manipulators and censors out there. That <laughs> but again, free uh, uh, free people uh, that, that, are, that are not constrained by believing in everything they've been told their whole life. Sometimes, folks, you've got to go with your gut feeling and look for yourself. And uh, you ain't going to find the truth on CNN, Fox, MSNBC, Bloomberg, Wall Street Journal, governments. You're not going to find the truth there, folks. You've got to go out and seek it yourself. Fortunately, the Internet is not completely screwed up, and, uh, uh, you know, we can uh, uh, rely on the Internet. Uh, to find some stuff out there. Well, what am I talking about, especially specifically when it comes to gold and silver markets, the CFTC. If you're tired of, uh, uh, if you're tired of this manipulation, you're tired of this bullshit, uh, take a look at, uh, go, go to the CFTC and file a complaint. There's a complaint form, you can see the URL up here, uh, forums.co, oh boy, <laughs> tips and complaints. Uh, but anyway, you can go in here and they do have a complaint, you can file a complaint. Uh, dis and what you can file a complaint for with the CFTC is disruptive or manipulated trading activities in the futures options or swap markets. Now, be real careful. Don't be a jerk. Don't put anything nasty in here. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, put down exactly what's going on and uh, answer the form correctly here and talk about these big shorts in the, com you know, these big commercial short positions in the COMEX market on silver. These are the manipulators. We talk about this all the time. Uh, if you got any specific questions, put them in comments. I mean, if you can't fill out the whole form and you're wondering what you should put in a specific box, I'll try to help you out here. Uh, just put it in the comments, and again, I'll try to answer you. Well, oh boy, long video today. Seeking Alpha, one of my favorite websites out here. I'm starting to look at stocks and bonds. We'll get into that another day. You know, I'm not going to become an expert in this stuff. So, uh, uh, but I, I do have. Uh, I picked my own little portfolio here. By the way, I start putting some stocks I might look at in the future. I'll show them to you some other time. Uh, as far as uh, news goes, if you uh, are new to my website, I'd advise you get Seeking Alpha. They have really good, if you go to uh, markets right here and you go to gold and precious metals, some good articles on uh, gold and silver. I believe this is free. You can read this for free uh, without subscribing to Seeking Alpha, but I do have an account myself. And uh, where am I going to go from here? Uh, I'm getting texts from my store that they're busy as hell and they could use some help, but hell, I ran the place myself. They can handle it. <laughs> Uh, ZH, not too much to talk about. I can go over the, you know, I talked about uh, um, uh, censorship here, and I'm kind of always a little bit nervous about talking about news, but, you know, all economic news and political news has an effect on gold and silver. The more oppressive a society becomes, the more oppressive a government becomes, the more crooked governments and, and corporations become, the, you know, the better chance that gold and silver is going to continue to climb, the physical gold and silver price, because people you know, it's been around for 5,000 years, and when you're in fear, what do you look for? You look for solid things with, with a good track record, and that's what gold and silver have. So, you know, the more lies we hear, for example, like this kind of uh, nonsense, the DOT Twitter uh, uh, that we saw, and you can read this on ZH, by the way, and re see the same nonsense. ZH is a free website, too. Uh, I've got the uh, uh, better edition to get rid of all the pop-up advertising, but again, it is free. Um, 
leaks, you know, uh, Germany is urging Congress to uh, thwart. Uh, none of this is good news for us politically right here, this stuff right here, uh, politically or economically. What does that mean? That means gold and silver are probably going to do very well in this environment of mistrust, in this environment of fear, in this environment of lies and deception. Uh, gold and silver is going to do very well. That's when it shines. I mean, pardon the expression, it shines in times of deception, lies, manipulation, and censorship. So you're going to do very well, folks. Uh, that's just a damn shame right there, if you ask me. And uh, uh, again, that's my opinion. I hope nobody censors me for giving my opinion on that. Uh, again, we're living in an age of manipulation. Well, we've always lived through manipulation and censorship. It's just getting to epic levels now. Uh, this was very interesting and low-key move. Singapore central banks add 26 tons of, tons of gold to its gold reserves. Uh, isn't that interesting that, uh, um, listen, what do central banks, think about this, central banks, whether it's Singapore, United States, well, I don't know what United States central banks own, but uh, uh, central banks across the world, Russian, Chinese, uh, they all put gold in their vaults. They don't put cryptos. They don't put uh, uh, stocks or bonds. They don't put, you know, they may own them temporarily. They're just kind of loaning on them. But uh, what do they have in their vaults? What, what do they secure? What is their wealth preservation? The wealth preservation of central banks worldwide has been and still is today. It's not Bitcoin. Again, it's not currency. It is gold. Uh, Singapore adds another 26 tons of gold to its gold reserves. And you'll see that... Uh, uh, there is, uh, 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 you know, that's what they hold, man. And uh, they try, to, and they discourage you from holding it. Why is that? Well, they want to pawn off uh, those crappy ass fiat dollars and those fiat pesos and those fiat rubles or whatever it is on your ass and uh, have you holding the bag when it's all done. And what are they going to be holding in their vaults? Gold. And what do they keep accumulating, like Singapore is right now, consistently year after year? What do they keep adding to their vaults? gold. Think about that, folks. And silver's, you know, silver's not much different. Silver's always going to follow the price of gold. Um, I would agree with this 100%. Again, my opinion. And uh, uh, I agree with that. Also, the bleeding has stopped per day in uh, equities markets, but another bloodbath is coming. We know that for sure. Uh, as I said on last Friday's video, was Friday the, uh, the day it was going to all fall apart? No, not really. And will a market crash look like it did in 2008? Will it happen nearly overnight or in a course of a week in a small period of time? Maybe not. Maybe central bankers and governments across the world are going to try to step this down a little bit at a time instead of a, a, a steep you know, drop overall. But a lot of that's going to have to do with the psychology and the sentiment of the public and how well governments, corporations can manipulate and censor uh, what's really going on and keep the public uh, uh, buying in this Ponzi scheme we got going on with fiat currencies and a never ending up in the equities that's just caused by the greatest bubble of all times uh, which we're in right now. When will the G boat explode? Will it happen like a balloon poop and just explode and go, go to zero? Or will it be a step down effect? Ha has governments and central bankers learned anything? I think they're stepping up the manipulation and the censorship to all time levels now folks and uh, uh, they're trying to, they know that this market's going to explode and they're trying to let it down gently. But again, who are they going to let hold the bag? Us. Well, Reddit group out here, I'd like to give my kudos and my props to everyone on Reddit. All the apes out there, keep stacking. You're doing a great job. And if you're not involved with the WSS Wall Street Silver Group, pretty cool dynamic uh, uh, groups with a group with a lot of enthusiasm enthusiasm out there and again you will find no better memes in the uh, precious metals market than you will from the individuals out here and that's what i like about uh, wall street silver it's, it's individuals all different thoughts all different opinions and different types of uh, political opinions and economic opinions but we all get together or they all get together in one group i, sh I I should say we too, because I'm involved with the group as well. Uh, anyways, if you're not uh, a subscriber and a, uh, you don't follow Wall Street Silver, uh, I recommend you do. It's kind of pretty cool, and it's a fun group to uh, be involved with. Well, let's take a look at uh, uh, what our videos were. Oh, my gosh. Let me see. Where is uh, Daily Show More? Okay, I better take a look here. And let's talk about uh, Friday's video. And sorry about that. I should have had this done for you, but... That's not Friday's video. That was a day before. That was, I did the pre- uh, Are you Thanksgiving. buying or selling gold? Oops, sorry about that. Uh, awesome buying opportunity. I'd like to thank uh, everybody uh, that watched this video. Again, what does video. this mean? To I should learn how to turn volumes off here. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to blast that in your ear. 
<laughs> uh, God, this is weird. This spam right here for, uh, it's a Bitcoin scam, and I can't remove it at all. For some reason, it's stuck on all the screens out here. Uh, you know, I've got the editing uh, ability here. Obviously, I own the video site, and I went to try to remove them and do all that stuff. Uh, let's try it one more time. Remove, report. Uh, I have reported them a dozen times. Cancel. And let's just do a quick remove here. I believe I can do that. There we go. All right, sorry about that, folks. Uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, some questions, see if I can answer anything out here. And I'd like to thank everybody for watching. And let's go down here. Um, you know, this is kind of interesting. The great thing about Silver is that every day, and I, I, let me. Let me answer this for Mr. Uh, <laughs> uh, F.U., all right? Uh, the great thing about silver, like the name, by the way, uh, is that every day is a buying opportunity. Every day it either goes down a little or it goes down a lot. The consistency of the downward movement is amazing as, as people who claim it will skyrocket. Um, Mr. F.U. Google, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I have to disagree with you completely. The consistency of the downward movement is amazing. Have you been following gold and silver markets for how long? What, just the last year when you started noticing that the, the market's gone down? Have you followed markets since uh, silver's been like a dollar, two dollar an ounce and was legal to own over a course, you know, a period of time? Uh, so the downward movement, uh, you know, if you're looking for in a very short time frame, yeah, it's been going down, but it's only temporary. And, and again, <laughs> You're completely off on that one, sir. The great thing about silver is that every day is a buying opportunity. Well, every day it goes down, it's a buying opportunity because the overall trajectory is upward, sir. And if you can't see that and you haven't followed history, then you really shouldn't be making comments like that as well. Hey, thanks for watching anyway, and I hope I wasn't too rough on you. I'm not trying to be a jerk or anything like that. It just, uh, uh, I think your, uh, your comment is completely uh, incorrect. So, Alvaro's quiz this. I didn't hear about the new critter until after the market tank. Yeah. You know, it's kind of funny. I didn't really uh, uh, follow it too much, but that seems to be an excuse why they tanked the market on Friday. But, again, don't know. And, uh, yep, agree with you. Thank you. I'll keep those opinions coming. Uh, I could have been fishing. I didn't go out fishing this week. There was 10,000 boats out there, man. Scared all the fish away. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, Nick says, uh, give me my opinion on Basel 3 will affect gold and silver prices next year. Um, you know what? Um, I don't think they've had much of an effect on gold and silver prices, really. And I'm not qualified to talk about it too much. I know as much about uh, the Basel III uh, and how that'll work or not work as you do. I've been reading a lot of other authors talk about it. But if you just type in Basel III, gold and silver, Nick, you're going to find a whole bunch of different opinions. And uh, probably if you start reading it, you'll be smarter than I do. Uh, again, what I've talked about for a long time, go look for yourself, man. Uh, I don't mean that in a bad way, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, the information is out there. If you take, a, take the time to go look, you will find it. Uh, thanks for watching, Nick. I appreciate it. The truth is markets don't exist today. It's like video games with fake currency tokens. Kind of what our video has been talking about here. Uh, hey, stop by any time, Billy. Uh, G-Boat Life for sure. And uh, I think your money would be safer in the bank than with Kathy Woods. Can't argue with that. Uh, my understanding is Kathy Woods, that ARK ETF, is entirely invested in mostly. The whole success has been with, uh, uh, um, you know, what, oh gosh, Tesla. You know, in Elon Musk's Tesla company. That's where she's made most of the money. Uh, I was reading an article. If it, uh, The ARK fund would probably have tanked if it wasn't for her investment in Tesla. Um, you know, having all your eggs in one basket or, or relying on one particular egg to feed everything is uh, not a good thing. Uh, Joey from Seattle, good to see you commenting. Um, Boca Stacker as well, and Akeisha, uh, I like to buy right now. I'm buying silver each time I have cash come in 10 to 25% put right into silver. And any opinions on Ashashi a, a Gold? I think that's a, uh, a refiner, and I believe they make good gold and silver bars, so I wouldn't uh, hesitate buying from them. And uh, really, that's about it. Hey, listen, if you're new to my videos, try to hit that like, even if you're not new, guys, you've been watching me for a while, hit that like button if you would. Also, uh, if you're new to my videos, hit the subscribe button as well. And if you haven't subscribed already and you've been watching me, hey, hit that subscribe button. It kind of gives me an idea of uh, who's watching and uh, why I need to keep doing these. <laughs> hey, that's really about it. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Call me anytime between 10 and 4. Mondays through Fridays. Um, happy to help you out with anything. And remember, uh, I am a local precious metal dealer and rare coin dealer. I only deal locally brick and mortars. I don't deal in the mail or on the phone. So if you don't live in my area, I recommend you find a good, handsome dealer like myself to deal with. <laughs> handsome and smart uh, uh, precious metal dealer like myself. Keep that money local if you can. I highly recommend it. 
And uh, boy, my phones are ringing off the hook. Well, that's really about it. Uh, talk to you soon. Have yourself a great day and uh, uh, see you tomorrow. Bye now.